it starts fundamentally from the point that regulators are built and structured for protection, uh, not for responsiveness. It's a problem. Um, and when we're looking at protection, uh, we always have to start from assessing a worst case scenario and holding everyone accountable to the worst case scenario irrespective of who they are. So you often have um, entities coming with strong track records, <coughs> um, with a pretty clear plan and seeking a bit of flexibility. But from the regulator's perspective, it's if I set the precedent with you that I can be this flexible, what happens when the person who's much less structured, clear, transparent, and has uh, much weaker risk management processes ask for the exact same thing. And I'm compelled by a court to treat you equally um, because of discrimination issues. Um, so that, that does create a, a certain level of barriers. But what we're trying to do, especially with the approach to regulatory sandboxes, is start building safe spaces where before you put that layer of regulatory question to them, you can set down effectively a perimeter. Uh, as long as you're staying within this kind of client, this kind of product, uh, with this kind of size, let's see how it works. Let's understand the true nature of its risks, and then we'll build regulatory responses to those risks, rather than trying to build something that's very generic to apply to the full spectrum. So that's where a, a lot of regulators are trying to see the opportunities that can come from sandboxes, that can come from incubator type plat platforms. Look across the world, um, it's very much each country is trying to understand what is the key demand in their jurisdiction and then try and react appropriately. And they are as diversified from what you're seeing in Ontario to what you're seeing in Australia to Singapore with the mass. It's all a tweak to try and address one, what can you do as a, as a regulator, how uh, responsive can you be? Because there's, there's a resource component of that also. Um, our ability to respond is a function of the kind of staff we have, the speed with which we can onboard new staff who can look at things differently. And that then translates into whether you're setting up an incubator or whether you're setting up a cloud uh, type sandbox. Because how involved can you actually be uh, given the kind of resources you have? But by and large, it is. Globally, I think what we're seeing, um, I, I sit on the board of IOSCO, it is very much a country-specific approach. And then through country-specific approaches, a lot of information sharing. There's at least consensus that right now we're not going to converge on FinTech standards. But what we can do is all learn from each other on how each of us, what kind of risks each of us are being exposed to and how we're responding to them. So we can a assist others to uh, kind of avoid the problems we have faced so that one day potentially we'll be able to converge around global standards on things. You know, part, part of our engagement right now and part of our new strategic direction um, is, as Jeremy put it, trying to fundamentally relook at what is the issuer, investor, and intermediary experience with us and with the market. Because unless we're focusing on that and addressing that issue, we can continue to roll out law, we can uh, try and put in place infrastructure, but we may not see uptake, we may not see impact. Um, so as a regulator, I think we're, we're very committed to fundamentally sh shifting the way we access and use data, applying data science to um, decision making, um, shifting the way we collect information, to try and facilitate, you know, you'll, you'll have you know, a group entity has to take their reports to six different regulators in slightly different formats. All they're asking the exact same questions, but none of them have standardized their format. So how do we work as regulators to ease the way information flows into our hands and the extent to which we can effectively share that information amongst ourselves to improve our ability to respond to uh, systemic stability issues and also overall uh, uh, intermediary experience. Uh, but I think it's also just coming to terms with the fundamental shift that's going to be in consumer protection. Um, with the disintermediation that's going to go on, the speed of access, um, the breadth of access, you know, so you're, you're no longer, especially on the continent, you're no longer uh, targeting those who are in cities, who are well educated. You can reach anyone and everyone. Now, uh, 
to the point that uh, Declan was making, it's opening up huge opportunities for massive abuse. Um, and if we don't find new ways to approach how we address consumer protection without adding 10 layers of intermediaries to hold accountable uh, for that, you know, uh, selling practices and treating customers fairly, uh, we will find that the route we're walking will likely cause more harm, more harm than good in, in the long term. Thank you.